On today's episode, Ash bought another veal. Um, Update on Gunny's, Gunny's Ute, he's separated the, the cab from the chassis which now sits under the VL over there. And he's got some questionably straight looking legs. I don't know. He's got some questionable legs on it at the moment. So I'm assuming he's about to send that off to the sandblasters to get all blasted. And Martin's Malou, I think in the last episode, it was there. So we've rolled it back to there. So he's on track for registering this in the year 2041. So that's pretty good. The VL's still up there. That's actually getting registered soon. So Ash has heard back from the engineer and everything and, and they're about to, to sort all that out. So speaking of VLs, if I walk out this back door here, the door doesn't even open straight because there's VL parts laying around. Ash bought another VL. Um, so it took him about 12 and a half minutes to, to strip the engine out of this because he's done it so many bloody times. But we're not here for all those Holdens and things. We're here for the Falcon. We're here for the Big Bird, the Big Yellow Falcon. So let's just get into it. I've got some KBS rust seal. We're going to be coating the interior of the Falcon. First, I've got to, I've got to get rid of all of the previous shit that was on the floor, all the coatings. Um, they used a spray glue and put the carpet underlay on. So I've got a wire wheel all that off. Um, there's a lot going on. I've already used some paint stripper to get rid of the majority of the sound deadening material that was factory. So most of that's already gone. Still got a bit to go. Just got to use the wire wheel, freshen it up, use some wax and grease, clean it all up, and then we're going to slap some KBS rust seal down and make the interior look really pretty and black and pretty much ready for rego. So the first coat's down, but um, I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but I've got this open just to get some airflow through so the paint just doesn't build up and, and, and overcome me. But what it's done is the wind has blown in the hood lining and shaken all the fibrous crap from the hood lining down onto the wet paint so you can see it all there. So now instead of looking like a nice smooth black surface, it's now got the texture of sandpaper. So that's, that's awesome. Look, there's a bit there. So that's exciting. I love that. So yeah, really wishing that I had uh, stripped out the hood lining before this, but I didn't, didn't expect it to be so bloody windy today. That's coat number one done. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'll wait about an hour or so, and then I'll do the second coat. All right, so it's the next day, we're back. I let it dry overnight after doing the second coat. And after doing the first coat, the roof lining, all that shit fell down from the roof lining and made it look really crap. So I waited for it to dry a little bit and I vacuumed up all the, the old roof lining shit off there. I was like, that's yeah, gonna look good. I did the second coat and then the cheap paintbrush that I got, it dropped all its, its brush bits into the, um, into the actual paint. So if you, you don't even really need to look closely, it's really obvious. Um, there's bits of brush all through the paint, but I mean, here we are, this one. not that I really care. It's 
it's going to get some sound deadening over the top of that. All in all, I reckon that looks pretty bloody spot on. So now that the interior is done, I've just got to get some stuff from car builders, some of their noise liner and all their other interior goodies and slap that in there. So that's done. But I'm removing the rear window now and I fucked up. And what happened? I fucked up, then I looked up how to do it. Which realistically is how it happens all the time, isn't it? So that's the chrome moulding which you can't get anymore. You can't buy that. Once it's, once it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. I tried taking that off before taking the window out. And then I looked up how you meant to do it and the window has to come out with the molding and all that sort of shit on it. So, that's that. I mean, really, in the, in the final build, I don't even think I'm gonna have the rear window molding because the whole thing's gonna be all blacked out. The car's theme is to be blacked out. So I'm not gonna have chrome molding, but I wouldn't have minded having these blacked out. So they're fucked. Maybe I can repair them, maybe I can't, I don't really know. But basically, you've just got to cut the seals. I've just taken a blade and just cut all the rubber out beneath the chrome and just been peeling the seals out. Now I've got the seal and it's all coming out in one hit. I don't want to, that's that. So we're going to rip the rear window out now without trying to mess up any more of the chrome molding. All right, so the window is out, and I've just poked around with the old screwdriver, poked around the little rust holes, and I don't know who built this car before, but what they've done is they've just put bits of tin, essentially, and then bogged over the bits of tin. They haven't welded it in, they've just bent it in shape and used it as a backing for the box. So bits of tin just came out. Left, right, and center. Look at that, beautiful holes everywhere. Look at that, that is, that is what we come here to see, isn't it? So this is what I mean, bits of um, bits of the old, oh, well that's, that's never coming out, um, but yeah. So this whole section will have to get remade, and that's just what I wanted, was more metal work. The takeaway point here is, don't buy a project car that's painted. Only buy a project car if it is bare. I'm talking blast. Just don't trust painted project cars. I reckon. It's sad, but there are some very cognitively impaired people out there that think, oh, I don't understand why just, not even any rust preventative. They just bog straight out of the rust and they just move it on. So, uh, well. All right, so after finding our, the old cheddar cheese situation here in the rear window, uh, we went to go fit a windscreen to make sure the pillars were in the right spots and um, I could start doing the cow. But uh, the windscreen that we got was just a little bit out. I'm not sure if there's a difference between coupes and utes and sedans on the rear windows. Um, I mean, the front winds windows. I thought they were all the same. Possibly not. Either this one was slightly out or this entire section is out by a lot, which I doubt. So yeah, but from what we saw from that windscreen, it seems all right. So we're going ahead with patching this thing up. Fixing up all the little bits and pieces along here. All the edges you can see are completely rusted out. So we're fixing them up with bits of scrap. So we can start on that.
Okay, so started on this side over here. So we've put plate in there. That was completely rusted out. That was completely rusted through. It was all, there, all over it. So now, that can go on there. Um, don't look at the welds. They're not fantastic because the metal that I was trying to grab onto, it just kept blowing away. I got it to a point where I just kept on adding more and more metal and now it's okay. So I've got this piece here that's going to be a bit of like an L bit there. Made the little the little ridge there to continue this on. But I'm um, not welding that in yet. We're just getting these, in, getting those to that, to that position. But I've got to go because I've got to go to dinner. And I've got some things to do at home before I go back to work. So that's where we're going to leave it. That is mounted back on. It's ready to go back on. So I'm pretty excited because now when you look at it from here, it looks kind of like a car again. Who am I kidding? It looks nothing like a car. It looks like a big yellow turd in the middle of the workshop. But we made some progress. So the interior is all done and sealed and all that. And it looks all very bloody pretty. We found some more rust to look at, which is fantastic. I love that. And now this is, we know for a fact that this is all good now. Uh, the pillars are in the right spot. The windscreen will go on. So we can start putting this on and have fun. Before I go, this is a good opportunity. Martin's, at the start of the episode, I said, look, the Maloo is, is moved here. But now it's moved about four feet higher. I tell you what, though. If I get that thing registered on the road before this, all that gets registered. Which, I mean, this is... I think he's, he's got to get a dyno tuned, he said the other day. It's got to get dyno tuned, so we've got to find someone who's going to tune it. And I think fix the hood lining. All accomplishable in one week. But I mean, actually, I reckon that's I reckon that's possible. I reckon that will get registered before either of these two. Who knows? Maybe this will. This might even get registered before those two. I reckon. 